Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jared Gray with my co-host, the Dynasty Chef, Steve. We are a proud partner of the Full-Time Fantasy Podcast Network on this week 14. How are you doing, Steve? Doing great. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. Hey, guys, uh, Jordan's out with uh, doing some crazy stuff with work. So you got me and Steve this morning, and we are going to run over your week 14 cast. So we're going to go with that real quick. All right. Let's quick get right to it. Tonight's game. Cowboys Bears. It's an interesting, interesting one, matchup. right? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, the Cowboys man, they gotta do something. Or they're well, I mean, Jason Garrett already looks like he's gonna lose his job. <laughs> yeah, I think he's I think he's out the door for sure. Uh hundred percent on that. I think he's already been informed. He just <laughs> Just you yeah, know, he's, you know, you got your job till the end of the season. That's it. It, it is a good morning, Zach. Thanks for joining. Um, we we appreciate everybody popping in again. This is for our podcast, so if we don't answer any questions. You're just gonna have to let us deal with it, and we're gonna run through the schedule and we'll try to help you guys out through this morning. Uh, it's a it's a big <clears> week, <throat> and just the aspect of uh, you're, you're in the playoffs, you're not in the playoffs. You know, like mm-hmm. me and Steve were talking offline. We've got uh, you know, in one of my leagues, if you're playing, mm-hmm. you know, you could still be playing for the for the manure championship or the toilet bowl or whatever you want to talk about. But we still pay that the winner of that. So, yeah, you may be playing for a, a one on the first uh, pick. You might be playing for the first pick in the draft. I mean, mm-hmm. who knows? Which I guess in that aspect doesn't Just mean you because want you're to... not in the playoffs. Don't mean you want to quit. I mean. I see people like I see people on Twitter talking about if you're not in the playoffs, don't be making waiver pickups and stuff like that. No, nah, screw that. Yeah, that is I, I, not I, how it works. If you're in the dynasty league, I mean, yeah, so exactly. Dynasty league, you still want to play play tough, right? So it's still mm-hmm. in the big week, and it's not the time to quit. That. So, agreed, hundred um, percent. Like I said, okay. So first uh, tonight we got Bears Cowboys. It's not a phenomenal matchup for. <laughs> You know the big players like you expect. Do I expect Roquan Smith to have the week he had last week? Mm-hmm. No, especially oh, against you know that that offensive line. They're still good offensive line. The Cowboys still have some more to play for. Believe it or not, mm-hmm. I mean the winner of the, that division could go to the playoffs still. So <sighs> they still have to play for. They do, and I mean the the players. I'm sure they still want it. You know, especially with Philadelphia losing last week as well. Um, this yeah, Bears Cowboys game is, is I think it's gonna be a close one. I think it's gonna yeah. be one of those tough defensive battle games. You know, I expect Khalil Mack to play well. I expect um Roquan Smith to have a decent game. I mean, especially with DT not playing, you gotta expect him to still play well. Uh, Kwiatkowski's played very well in Danger Vincent's absence. So, mm-hmm. in that aspect, you have to see that. With the other guys, we're after looking at uh, do I expect Xavier Woods to step up? Do I expect, um, you know, Jalen Smith to have another good game? Because Leighton Van Der Esch is out. Yeah. So, Lee, Lee's, Lee has played really well in his absence, though, in LVE's absence. Like I said, he does, though. Yeah, he does. When he's healthy, I mean, he's been a good linebacker. Mm-hmm. The biggest question is, will he stay that way? Um, <laughs> how deep does this linebacker core go is a real question. You know, it's some, te- some teams have a really deep linebacking core. They have one of the top duos in the league when they're healthy. <clears throat> Lane Van Der Esch might be done. I mean, that's just the facts. So – I guess we'll see where we're at with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you still got to play your studs here. I think Roquan is, is a play. I still think Jalen Smith is – I mean, he's going to be a linebacker one. Mm-hmm. You got to play him. Uh, you, the Dallas defensive line, who, who you got there? I'd probably Robert Quinn. Yeah, I, I still think Robert Quinn's a, a start. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Trubisky still – Oh yeah, he's Trubisky. So there's that. Uh, 
you're gonna go down, go down in flames. Yep. So I don't know. That's that's a tough one. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about, though, the Buccaneers and the Colts. Mm. This this could be one of those either really tight games or or something could blow up. Yeah, you know, just like this all has blow up. Well, the the Colts, you know, had a, what a seventeen seventeen game in the fourth quarter, and then ended up getting waxed. You know, <laughs> because mistakes. I mean, when mistakes happens, points are scored. So the Colts end up losing. Yeah, and their defense played really good all game. But <laughs> I mean, that's what happens, dude. Oh man! So, uh, like I told you, I have. Um, I'm really considering playing Devin White this week against the Colts. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's that's a like, it's a good matchup. It's like a great matchup. Me it first. really is. I mean, he and he's he's been on a tear the last four weeks. I so. think he's just going to continue that tear. I, I I'm with you. Um, Darius Leonard is still Darius Leonard. You still got to play him every week. Mm-hmm. Walker's a pretty good play. Now they're going to pass a lot more, so. Somebody who I haven't said a whole lot um, is Roxin, the corner from the Colts. I expect he'll probably be guarding either Godwin or Evans. Um, it just doesn't – we just don't know which one of those two is going to blow up. It's it's never both of them. I think mm-hmm. we have one game where both Godwin and Evans had a big game. So – me personally, I have Evans in one of my groups, so I need him to go off. Uh, well, then it's so, not going to be him, right? That's, well, that's what's going to happen. I, I, he's not gonna do anything that's going to uh, be. He hasn't played yeah. well the last couple weeks, so. Um, and I feel like I don't know what to do about that that pair. I'm with you, you know, and that's another person we're talking about trying to keep their job is James Winston. So. Mm. I would tell you, I think he has to win a few. And the, the Colts are definitely in the conversation as to make the playoffs in that division. I think they're against the wall against the Titans and the Texans. I, I think the Titans so, are – well, I don't know. That's tight, man. The Texans are Titans. I don't think it's going to be the Colts. And, and I'm with you. Uh, they're, I just don't know if they're going to pull it off. Uh, they, looked, so. they looked good early, but then they just started uh, falling off a cliff there. Late in the season, yeah. Right now, I think the Texans to lose. To be honest with you, I, I think they're gonna. The, the Titans look really good on the The Tannehill. Titans have looked good the last couple of weeks. I'll agree with that. Surprising. I mean, nobody can stop Henry. It seems like he's mm-hmm. been going for 100 yards every game the last couple of games. So take Mariota out of there and put Tannehill in, and he's serviceable enough. <laughs> yep. Uh, next game we got Bills Ravens, and. To be honest with you, this is going to be one of the games of the week for me because oh, yeah, should be, the Bills should, have a yeah. lot to play for. The Ravens obviously have a lot to play for. Uh, I want that. You know, I'm, it's surprising, but I want that Bills defense to play really hard. <clears throat> you know, and I'll be honest with you, I think Tremaine Evans and Matt Milano mm-hmm. are two must plays because the Ravens like to run the ball, so tackles mm-hmm. are going to happen. So They're going to be balling this. Yep. I mean, it's late. You know, we're talking. It's it's early December. This could be a snow game. You know, I haven't yeah. checked the weather with the Bills Ravens, but the Ra- but the Ravens played really good in the rain last week, and I mean, it was pretty nasty outside. Mm-hmm. You know, and they beat San Francisco. I would tell you the Ravens definitely have the leg up in this. They're the better team overall, I think. Um, but hard to bet against the Bills because – Well, you know, if Jordan were here, he'd be all over uh, Josh Allen. Oh, dude. But, I mean, that's the thing is Josh Allen. I mean, he's good for a touchdown or two a week. So, mm-hmm. he's – fantasy football-wise, and he's probably, been good. Probably in some unconventional manner, too. He'd probably be out there receiving it. I mean, some yeah, crazy, Some crazy touchdowns. I did, who was it? Who was it that caught one this uh, last week? Oh well, we got the kid from the Titans that nobody's even talked about, has, and then you had Vita Vea. Have yeah, yeah, Vita Vea had one. It was I thought I had a, I thought we had another quarterback who made a a touchdown reception this this last week too. Well, well I mean, in college, Jalen Hurts did. Does that count? Oh, was it? 
<laughs> yeah, that's crazy. We, we talk about a lot of stuff. We don't have spectrum wild. food. So, yep. Um, it's just one of those things, man. I, you, you don't know how this week's going to go, mm-hmm. right? And with the Bills and the Ravens, this is going to be one of those make or break weeks for the Bills. I hate I to say that, that but dude, we're, we're in week 14. Mm-hmm. Right, you got three weeks to to win something. The you got the New England Patriots who've who've lost what three games now? Two, two games. Two games. So they've lost two games, um, both against really good teams in the Texans and the Ravens. So do I still think they're the team to beat? To be honest with you, I'm not sure yet. Uh, it's, it's the Ravens not. are as good as anybody. The San Francisco is as good as anybody. The Patriots are the Patriots. Yeah. Let's say we're missing they're, – they're missing pieces. Yes, yeah, and it's a lot of pieces. Well, it's, I think they're more missing yeah. offensively right now. Exactly. Than anything, right? You know, that they, they – Well, there's, know. there are times when their, their defense kind of disappears. Last week they, they disappeared a little bit. And I, I it might have been because they were sick. See them over on the sidelines. They looked yeah. like they were struggling. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they were going through the flu, too. So, you know, we'll get to them in a little bit. Uh, with the Ravens, your must-starts, do you, do you think that Judon has the game that he had a couple weeks ago, or is he going to disappear? And that Judon's been pretty consistent, bleeding in tackles for the team lately. Uh, Patrick Arnwasser disappeared. I mean, he – I, I, mean, I, I haven't trusted him all season. It's been he's had really good games. He has, but and he got injured, and then mm-hmm. then his snap counts went away, and he wasn't playing mm-hmm. very much. Exactly. Uh, you want to talk about a team that is definitely going after a linebacker in the draft? It is mm-hmm. the Baltimore Ravens because they don't know what they have. They're not deep. They're not not in a group where they expect to. Just blow up. So exactly. yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. Them. It's hard to trust them. And I mean, there's, I would be, I wouldn't be very surprised if they went after the Oklahoma linebacker, um, Kenneth Murray, because mm-hmm. well, they like drafting Oklahoma players, and the ones that they have are really solid. Tony Jefferson, Marquis Brown, they have two offensive linemen, right, mm-hmm. um, and then they have. Uh, uh, Mark Andrews is the tight end. Well, all five of those would be starting if it wasn't for Jefferson getting injured. So, and I think Ken, I mean, you and me have talked about this. Kenneth Murray, we think, is a really, really good linebacker. We think that he's all over the ball everywhere. Mm-hmm. His closing speed is phenomenal. His, he's got great, when he's got two hands on a guy, they're not getting away. He's, he's a monster. So I could see him going to the Ravens. You know, and obviously when we do our rookie thing in a couple weeks, then we'll get there. But uh, as for the Bills, or talked about it, and you got to start. Um, you know, I think you got to start both linebackers, Intermate Emmons, Matt Milano. It's, it's a good matchup for them. I also really like uh, Jordan Poyer in this. Um, and to be honest with you, Ed Oliver has come on strong. Oh, definitely. So he's a guy that, that I'm looking at streaming this week. I mean, it's going to be it's, depending on the matchups that you have. And if you're looking at the start, and I think he'll have a tough time against uh, against this offense against uh, Lamar Jackson. And so I'm more worried about um, I think, I think if they can contain Lamar Jackson. Yeah. So and if they can do that, and they're pretty good at that. They're pretty good at containing the run. They're one of the best run defense in the league, especially in the red zone. So mm-hmm. it really just depends on what their backside will do. Uh, so I mean, that, that's what I got on that one. Let's get to the next game. Lions and the Vikings. This is a big game. Whether or not Dalvin Cook's going to play. Mm-hmm. Um, sounds like he's he said he's good to go. He was limited practice yesterday. But I'll be honest with you, they need to win this game. They have to win the division. So – I don't know really what, which Kirk Cousins you're going to get. So he's, he's been really stout the last couple of weeks, though. Yeah, I mean, 
they they almost came made a comeback against the the Seahawks. Yep, and the Seahawks are as uh, to be honest with you, they're, they're a team that is definitely. I mean, they're obviously going to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. They very easily right now. I think they're leading the division mm-hmm. over San Francisco because San Francisco lost. Yep. So that that win right there took Seattle to the top spot, the number two spot actually. Uh, and then move them all the way to the fifth spot in one game because San Francisco lost mm-hmm. to the Ravens. So could you imagine going into that game, you were the number two seed, and then now you're the number five seed? <laughs> yep. And you're one of the best teams in all of football. Mm-hmm. You know, that that it's funny because I'm I'm in the position where I had a bye week in fantasy football, and now I don't have a bye week because I lost by four points. The same thing happened to me. I mean, I didn't lose by four points, but. But the thing is, we talked about this, about me starting Hubbard. I was going to start Hubbard. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, didn't click save. So because of that, I, I ended up losing. So it happens. That's I mean, mm-hmm. that's football, bro. That's football. Yeah. Um, uh, I promised you last week, nobody started La- Laquan Treadwell in the mm-hmm. Vikings, and he got a touchdown. So there's that. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> but nobody expected that. And, and now I'm playing my buddy Ryan this week. So good luck. <laughs> I hope you take second in our game. So there's that. <laughs> the first place and, loser. And, and the thing is, is me and Tim's have had battles. Though I've been in this league for two years, and me, I think every time we've played, it's been it's been tight. So, uh, those are the best ones. But thing is, is, you know, I have injury concerns. Mm-hmm. He has injury concerns. Nobody wants to play Tim's. I promise you, he has got a loaded lineup. And <laughs> to be, I mean, think about this. I I had Danny Trevathan and Leighton Vanderex both get hurt on me mm-hmm. this year. Which those are two guys I'm starting every week if I'm playing them. So now I'm I'm kind of in a weird mm-hmm. spot, obviously. So who'd you, uh, who'd you pick up and uh, to replace him? Um, so at one time I picked up uh, Nate Gary, mm-hmm. but I have Corey Littleton, which obviously I'm going to start Corey Littleton. He can go off for 50 points. Yeah. Um, I have Chandler Jones. I have who's going to be a starter. My biggest question is who I'm going to start between Marcus Golden, Mark Barron, and Cole Holcomb. So that's my tough one. Hmm. I mean, I could start a defensive lineman in that aspect, but I don't think it's going to happen. Unless Everson Griffin plays, then I might play Everson Griffin over Cole Holcomb. Yeah, I see. I'd probably so we'll see. Holcomb, but... <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll get that to that. Uh, <coughs> in the Vikings game, like I said, if Everson Griffin is playing – I'm probably going to play that, especially against the Lions. Uh, Trey Flowers played very well. Um, the thing is, is the Vikings offensive line is strong enough where I'm not really streaming much players from the Lions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jared Davis has played pretty well lately. Um, Taven Wilson is probably a must start for me, uh, depending on what's going on with Tracy Walker again. I, I mean, he's. I, I would say he's got to be shut down for the year. We'll see what happens. You know, if they're smart, that's what you do. That kid, that kid could be a star. And if they're smart, if they're but it's Detroit, so you know. yeah. When have they ever been smart? Well, they do have a great coach now. I, I really believe that. I, I really love their coach. I, you know, it's like every time somebody goes there, they just they start doing lions things. Yeah. Well, is that their? I mean, is that really their front office? The biggest question. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing. It's just. It's not. It's not the coaches making the decisions. It's probably the front office. Yeah. So I mean, mm-hmm. in that aspect, so Trey Flowers, I think you're still going to play him. Uh, Dino Hunter is a must start, mm-hmm. no matter what here. Yeah. Um, I think that you're going to have to start Taven Wilson. I think that you're going to have to start Harrison on the opposite side. The biggest question is who do you start at linebacker with the Vikings? I mean, you got. I think you got to play Kendricks. He's one. He's one of the league leaders in pass deflections in some leagues. 
a pass deflection is worth four or five points in some leagues. For us, I think it's three points in the IDP one, two, three leagues, um, which we will try to make your standard scoring. So there's that. Um, overall, not a phenomenal group to watch, but we'll see where we're at. The next game, we got to get through these. Mm-hmm. Redskins, Packers. Um, yeah, be I'll be honest Packers. with you. Well, you, we said that. Be. I really thought the Redskins – could pro- probably lose last week and against Carolina. Well, I mean, they got their coach fired. So the Redskins have two really good running backs and Adrian Pierce and Darius Geis. Okay. Mm-hmm. Their passing hasn't been phenomenal. You know, TJ McLaurin is a solid receiver, but he has been disappeared. Uh, really, I really want Haskins to play well there. They've had three. You've really thought they went through Robert Griffin, Kirk Cousins, and now they've been streaming quarterbacks since they let go of Kirk Cousins because mm-hmm. they were franchise tagging him every year. I mean, his last franchise tag was like thirty-two million. It was crazy. How you franchise the guys not to keep him? I know. <laughs> so, and then the Redskin way. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that this is the week the Packers finally wake up. Aaron Jones has a good week. I think. He needs to. I think Aaron Rodgers has a good week again. Um, Alan Lazard is kind of blown up, played really well for the Packers. Uh, Blake Martinez is still a must start in this game. Mm-hmm. The question is, is Matt Ioannidis, Cole Holcomb, what, you know, Kerrigan disappeared, which means they had the other kid last week who we talked about on Monday's show. We haven't talked about all year, but because Ryan Kerrigan missed his first start and however many starts, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. And so I'll be honest with you, I'm not super into this game. It's it's a game that I'm kind of staying away from because I think it's going to be one of those runner guns or it could be 24-17 game. So – I think Packers wise, you got to start whoever you're going to start because they're, the Redskins are going to run the crap out of the ball. Mm-hmm. And Darius Geis, when he get, I can't believe he didn't get more carries. I mean, his first two carries at 63 yards last week. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's crazy. I think he's going to get some more carries this week. Hopefully. Just to Playing on a couple leagues. I mean, it, it's a tough matchup, to be honest with you. Redskins, the Redskins front sevens, you know, especially the front four is really solid. You know, you got pain there. Mm-hmm. Ionitis is good. Kerrigan when he's healthy. Montez Sweat, who we don't talk a whole lot about, but he's been playing really well. Um, we, I, I'm having a mental blank on somebody. Uh, the uh, the new kid that played started last week. So tough game for me. Kind of what I'm staying away from. Uh, Texans Broncos. I'll be honest with you. I think the Texans Texans are going to blow the Broncos out of the water. Yeah, uh, the Broncos did not look very great last week. Uh, I don't trust them. Um, the Texans looked like world beaters last week. Mm-hmm. I mean, the first three quarters it looked, didn't look like the Texans had a prayer of losing. Mm-hmm. And then here come the Patriots. I mean, yeah, they were. That's what the Patriots do, though. Yeah. So it, it's at the it's at Houston. Um. I am considering playing A.J. Johnson in this game for the Broncos. Mm-hmm. Uh, Derek Wolf is on injured reserve now, so I don't know who – I mean – That's unfortunate. Yeah, and Von Miller's been, you know, dealing with some injuries as well. I don't mm-hmm. know what they're going to do. Justin Simmons, I expect to have a – They're going to lose. Game. Justin Simmons is going to play well because, well, I don't think they're going to do anything. If they get by A.J. Johnson, then who else you got? So I think Justin Simmons has probably five or six tackles as, at the safety position, to be honest with you. Um, the Texans, uh, Justin Reed has disappeared, and then he reappears and disappears and reappears. It, it, I think it's a lot of his injuries. Um, also with the Texans, McKinney, Cunningham. I mean, these guys, I got I to be starting, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. I don't see how you don't start them at this point. Like I said, I think the Texans are going to blow them out of the water. 
So I think they're gonna come out in their SWAT uniforms again. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I mean, it's not they, SWAT they time. Could, they could be coming wearing cupcakes. Mm -hmm. You know, because honestly I think they're gonna blow them out of the water. Oh yeah, I mean this is I think this is too easy for them. I I, well, I hope they don't come out overconfident. Like, oh, we're just going to trash these guys and then just. I mean, it's still an NFL football game. So yeah. any team can beat you. Exactly. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or I ask mean, the Redskins. Yeah. So two teams that weren't expected to win last week changed games. Yeah. Uh, the next game I'm actually really excited about. And I would tell you I'd be a little different about it if it wasn't mm -hmm. at the Saints. But. The Saints need a good game. DeMar Davis has been playing out of his mind. He's a must-start every week. Hell, yeah. I mean, he's an IDP Army guy. So, mm -hmm. he's definitely Man. one of the surprises of the year, um, if not the surprise of the year, when it comes to guys that nobody was talking about to being <clears throat> one of the studs of the year. I mean, he, he mm -hmm. without a doubt, is not you got to talk to him about being – top six defensive players of the year? Definitely. I mean, I would think so. Uh, San Francisco's in the same boat. Fred Warner playing mm -hmm. out of his mind since Quan Alexander got hurt. Yep. Which makes you Absolutely. want to go, well, do we need Quan Alexander? Yeah. I no, mean, they don't. I'll be honest. They might move on from Quan. Even as good as he is, mm -hmm. you got to pay for him. Yep. So, I'm paying Fred Warner. I'm going to tell you that. So, Greenlaw's played really well when he's played healthy. Mm -hmm. they're, they're strong. San Francisco is strong. They know they're strong. They could, they could, one, win the division, or two, win the Super Bowl, or they're going to win one game in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I think they get to the playoffs. I think they win the first game. The thing is, they might even play Dallas in the first game or Philly or who knows. We'll see what happens with them. I, I don't Dallas or Philly. Oh, divisions. wow. That's who knows what's going to happen. Um, wow. The Saints, like we said, Jamar Davis, Von Bell, uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson played very well. Um, a guy that Marshall Lattimore has been. Dude, when he's mm -hmm. on, he's he's very tough. Uh, George Kittle looks like he might be back st strong this week. So who guards him is the real question. Who can guard him? Um, honestly, I'm up. probably – I'm either putting Marshawn Lattimore or Von Bell against him, but I think they're going to put Chauncey Gardner Johnson against him. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see what happens. I'm just not really sure with that group. What they have decided to do. It's gonna, I think that's going to be a fun game because yeah. the Saints can store, score if they want to. The 49ers have been susceptible to the susceptible against the run mm -hmm. and definitely against the pass. You saw what um, Kyler Murray did with against them. The, yeah. the Cardinals should have beat them mm -hmm. in San Francisco, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, so that's gonna be fun one, to be honest. I think I think that's gonna be another close game. I think it just depends on which Saints team shows up. The one that can score or the one that doesn't score. Mm -hmm. uh, next game um is a two weeks ago I told you that the Browns were gonna throttle mm -hmm. the Bengals. <laughs> I'm not sure about that this week. Um the Browns went right back to not protecting their quarterback. I think Baker was sacked five times last week. He was hit like 10 in total. Uh, looked like he, I thought he broke his wrist against, you know, when throwing the football and he hit Cam Edwards' helmet. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought he broke his wrist. Uh, they asked him if he's going to play. Um, and I really liked his comments that, well, mom didn't raise no wuss. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> he's playing. And. Mm -hmm. Baker's tough. I've always said that he's tough. I love to, I love that demeanor about him. He talks it, but the dude, he doesn't step away from a game as much as he's been hit and injured and stuff like that. 
Uh, yes, we are at it bright and early on a Thursday. Got to get you guys rolling this week. So um, this is going to be a fun one, to be honest with you, because I like Hubbard. I like – I definitely like Hubbard in this in this matchup yeah. because the Browns haven't blocked – for Baker Mayfield all year. Why do I expect mm-hmm. them to start doing it now? Yeah. The, la- the last two games, they have not, not blocked well for him. However, Baker could torch the Bengals again. He Two years last year, I think he scored 35 points in fantasy against them. So I kind of expect the same thing. I like Nick Vigil in this game mm-hmm. for the Bengals. I like Hubbard, like I said. You gotta start Sean Williams and Jesse Bates because it's Sean Williams and Jesse Bates. Okay, Jermaine Pratt's been playing pretty well. Joe Schobert is an All Pro this year, guaranteed. Oh, start. He's gonna get paid. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Joe Schobert is right now. It's gotta be, in my honest opinion, it's between Jordan Hicks and Joe Schobert for Defensive Player of the Year. For fantasy wise, it is those two. Those are yeah. the top two leading scores. Um, it's going to be really close. Uh, I think over the next two weeks, we decide who's. If it, we're saying it ends this week, Jordan Hicks wins by a narrow margin. And I'm talking like point, point, points. However, I think if Joe Schobert's not in, who's more valuable to the team? Because if Joe Schobert's not in with Cleveland, Mm-hmm. They're not near as good. He's an all-pro. Guaranteed Jordan Hicks and Joe Schobert both make – are both all-pros this year. Mark it down. Definitely. Joe Schobert's going to easily get paid this year, no matter yeah. what. And if Cleveland doesn't pay him, which they're – Somebody else players, will. Oh, somebody's definitely paying him. Mm-hmm. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you right now, if they let him go, Dallas will pay the Yang mm-hmm. for him. Or you know the Patriots will. Oh, yeah. Because I the mean, Patriots are getting a little older. Patriots so, love picking up love picking up uh, players like that. Yeah. I mean, he's a grinder. There's no way you let All-Pro Joe go. And that, that is, is literally his nickname right now, All-Pro Joe. Um, so, again, uh, on the Brown side, uh, Thomas is a pretty good play. Sheldon Richardson has been a really good play lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, Olivia Vernon got hurt again. Zach Tom or Chad Thomas got hurt, hurt his back last week. Little Vernon hurt his knee last week. Yeah. Sheldon Richardson. I, the Browns are riveted with injuries and suspensions. Right. So, yeah, you got to throw that one in there. You know, they, I think they're down right now to Cox, Sheldon Richardson, uh, Sion Takitaki actually played a little defensive end last week, which because they don't have anybody else. <laughs> um, so really, it's been and that's going to be a game Sunday when it, we're looking at start sits. That's again that I'm really going to look at the injuries and the actives because mm-hmm. that's a game that I'm really interested in. It's just just the facts. It's going to be a fun one. I, I think if the Browns come to play like they're supposed to play. They're going to torch the Bengals if they play like they're supposed to play. However, um, it's pretty evident that o- uh, Oda Beckham Jr. wants out. Yeah. Um, he even Big surprise. I mean, he even told uh, Jimmy Garoppolo that, "Hey, I, I'm, I would I would come here." That was weeks ago. Man, I don't, like I don't even know why anybody would want to play with him. It's just like you're just gonna if things don't go well, you're just gonna want out. I, I said years ago, I thought Jarvis Lander was the better player. Even, I mean, if you look at it, Oda Beckham tells you how good Jarvis Lander is. Jarvis Lander, he's, he's, he's going to make the Pro Bowl, mm-hmm. I think. This late this late season push might move him into the Pro Bowl. He's definitely good. He's played, he's played very well the last mm-hmm. five weeks. And it's pretty evident they're, they're targeting him much more than – Oda Beckham for sure. Panthers-Falcons, uh, this is another big game. Ron Rivera's been fired. Mm-hmm. It won't be long before he gets the job. Let's just be honest here. Oh, for sure. He's still a good coach. 
um, much better than, I mean, the Redskins got to look at him. But the Panthers have had so much talent on both sides of the football to, to lose last week to a team they shouldn't have lost to in the Redskins. They're done. I mean, they had to fire. I mean, he's, they, they should be going to the playoffs no problem, especially in that division. The Falcons, Dan Quinn's probably going to be fired. You think he's next? Yeah, I, I really do. It's either him or Jason Garrett. I don't know. Right. Well. Which quarter, which uh, coach going to be fired next? So. I think both of them are going to be fired by the end of the season, no matter what happens. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you think another one gets fired this in midseason? Or not midseason, but before the end of the season? Before the end of the season? I'll be honest, and I said this, what, four weeks, four or five weeks ago, and I know that I posted on Twitter that Jared, Garrett, Jason Garrett didn't belong finishing the game, let alone the season. I mean, it's, it's evident to me. And then last week, I mean, you could see it in Jerry Jones' eyes. You know, his mm-hmm. eyes were water like he's done. And then he comes oh, no. out, you know, and he's being the coach. I mean, he's being the GM and preaching up his guy, right? But the fact of the matter is that the Dallas Cowboys haven't won against a winning team all season. So why do I expect him to start now? You know what I mean? So I'll be honest with you, I, the only reason he, he hasn't been fired is because Jerry Jones is loyal, yeah, which sucks for him. Yeah. He, needs, he needs to be gone, mm-hmm. right, to where I'm going to tell you the – in the other aspect, I, I don't think the head coach of the Jets should be there. No. Uh, so he's going to get another year. He's going to get another year no matter what because mm-hmm. this is their – they still don't have a steady GM yet, no. <clears throat> which is interesting. All right, back to the Falcons Panthers game. Um, new coach for the week. Uh, mm-hmm. Panthers defensive mm-hmm. kind of off and on. Mm-hmm. They, dude, they have so many good players though. I mean, Brian Burns is a young stud. Shaq Thompson, you yeah, know, they, they, I mean, they, should, they should just keep doing what they're doing. They, I mean, thing is, the Panthers could easily have three or four more wins. They should have beat Green Bay. Mm-hmm. They should have beat Tampa Bay the first, what, second week of the season. They should have won last week against the Redskins. I mean, that's three wins right there that were – two of them were goal line stands. So, the Panthers could easily have two more – three more wins, easily, and probably four which means they would be went leading the division by a mile. And, and that's a you know division that has the Saints in it. So, but that's how that division is. It's crazy to me. Th- this might be one of the first years where the team who won the division the year before wins it again because it never happens. Usually the win – I've seen so many years where the winner of that division will be the last in that division or third in that division. Mm -hmm. But the Saints have moved so much farther in front of everybody else overall. The Falcons have so much talent. They really do. And I get they've had injuries, Mm -hmm. right? And Casey got hurt again, again, you know, and then they lost Neal. Devondre Campbell is still a must start. Uh, Deion Jones has come on strong lately. And this is a good matchup for both linebackers. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually playing both of them. I, I like I like Luke Keekley. I like Shaq Thompson in this game. Eric Reed is a must start he's, every he's, week. He's, he's balling. He's been a little down lately. He still had a lot of tackles. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's been consistent. Which consistent, is, yeah, but he, yeah. I'll say consistent. I would say, I would say he had a slow week last week, but <clears throat> before he had three sacks. He's been more floor than ceiling. Which I'm, you know yeah. me. I will take a high floor yep. all day long because at least then I know what I'm getting. Mm-hmm. But he's had those ceiling games where he scored thirty points. So, um, but we could say the exact same thing about the next game in the Jets and Dolphins mm-hmm. because Jamal Adams 
is probably the only player on both sides of the ball that I'm definitely starting. Yeah. Because, well, here's the thing. The Dolphins are scoring points. Mm-hmm. Love or hate them. I think they're averaging 24 points over the last, like, six or seven games. They're if you're doing that, you would expect to win ball games. But your defense can't stop anybody either. Mm-mm. But the Jets are trash. <laughs> yeah, this is the trash bowl right here. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about the manure bowl, we got it right here, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. The <laughs> Dolphins and the Jets are just not good. I mean, both of these teams were in the talk for first pick in the draft. Now it really? looks like the Bengals have shored that up. This could be a high even with game. Game. This this is a big week, right? Because both these guys have draft picks that they can get. They'd be they'd just be rolling out the red carpet. Why don't you score? No, you go ahead and score next. Yeah. <laughs> it, it could be one. Of, I, I honestly, I think the Dolphins are. I think the Dolphins got to be the favorite in this game. And I hate to say that because I don't know which Jets team's going to show up. Yeah. Because the Jets have had games where, like, they beat Dallas. They beat the bricks off of Dallas. Oh, man, just destroyed them. Yeah, and then – They beat the bricks off of Dallas, and Dallas, like we talked about, they had this stat um, when leading in all these categories. Mm-hmm. The team is 90-1. and one. The one loss was the Dallas Cowboys against the Jets. Because they want they, they led in every stat, time oh, of possession, that's, that's embarrassing. yards per carry, all to that stuff. Jets, and they lost. To the Jets. This yeah. bad Jets team. Yes, very bad. Uh let's get moving on. Chargers, Jaguars. I think we still got like six games left. Okay. Chargers, Jaguars, um, Derwin James back. Mm-hmm. Um, he was quiet last week. Sure, it's a little better this week. He's probably just coming back. I mean, the mustache is back for the Jaguars. Gardner Minshew. He's yeah. Coming, I mean, yeah, which I think that I would have never brought Foles back and started him right away. Here's the fact. Yeah. They paid the guy, so they had to play him. Yeah, so they didn't have but to it cost play them. Him. It guaranteed cost them a victory because they got throttled. They didn't have to do anything. Yeah. So, well, I think that's what the coach felt like. Because like, well, we paid this guy. The GM paid. He probably got some pressure. Like, hey, we paid this guy thirty million dollars. So it's. And I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and lose that. Yeah. So, Leonard Fournette's been kind of quiet, yeah. but I saw a stat the other day. Leonard Fournette is like second in receptions over the last like five weeks, and Gardner Minshew definitely targets him. So. That could be a fun one. The Chargers. Um, Hunter Henry disappeared. Is that just me? Or I've just not seen him in the stat line very much. The Jaguars, pretty good matchup for that, I would think. This is not a game that I'm, like, super stoked about by any means. Adrian Phillips is back. Derwin James is back. Uh, Ingram's playing. Honestly, I still think the Jaguars lose this one by seven to ten points if the Chargers played like they're supposed to play. But I don't know which Chargers team's going to show up. Probably the, again, their division isn't locked up either. Nope. I mean, <clears throat> the Chargers have been off and on lately. I mean, they got to play well. Rivers going to throw. Games. They're going to Rivers going to throw four interceptions. Yeah, uh, Josh Allen, I think, is still a pretty good start this week. Yeah. Yannick Kakwe is a pretty good start this week. Definitely. Joey Bosa is a good start this week. He's always a good start. Yeah, you always going to start Joey Bosa. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I always get you the points, but you're definitely going to start him. Um, that's how I feel about that one. You know, I'm pretty excited about talk that, talking on that one come Sunday on our live show. So, mm-hmm. Chiefs Patriots. Do we expect the Chiefs Patriots game from last year or expect? I mean, you would talk early season Chiefs Patriots. Yeah, or playoff say, Patriots? yeah, exactly. We should differentiate on that one because there were two games. Two last totally season. different games at that. Mm-hmm. The Patriots got blown out early season, and then it was a completely different game in the playoffs. Russ, I'm going to answer this question Sunday. So. 
bring it to me Sunday. I will take care of you. We got to get through these next six games in the next fifteen minutes. Good Sunday. question, though. I think you know which one I'm looking at. I don't know. Bert. Patriots are having a hard time moving the ball. The Patriots are having a hard time moving the ball, but they've played good defenses. They have. And the fact of the matter is the Chiefs have been bottom third the last three years, they, which is ridiculous because they were top five for a long run there, especially in the Andy Reid coach team. How is his defense bad all of a sudden the last they, two, three years? The Chiefs haven't been running the ball so well. Let's be real. Nobody wants to play in Foxborough. Mm-mm. Nobody. Even Mahomes has been down a little bit lately. Yes and no. Um, you know, they haven't been completely healthy. Mm-hmm. I, I think, I mean, does Stephon Gilmore guard Tyree Kill? Because, honestly, as good as Gilmore is, he ain't fast enough to stay with Tyree Kill which means I expect one of the safeties who were fast enough to go with him. I think mm-hmm. they just try to keep him shallow mm-hmm. and they're going to lay over, you know, one of the twins over top of him. That's what's going to happen in that game. I, I just see that happening. I just expect them to try to contain Tyra kill. We'll yeah. see what happens. Uh, I do like a lot of plays here uh, for the Patriots. I like Kyle Van Noy. Um, Jamie Collins has been kind of really, really quiet lately. Don't know what's going on there. I think Juan Thornhill has been played has played very well and has not got up much love as much as we talk about Tyron Matthew. Juan Thornhill's played maybe better than he has the, this whole year, mm-hmm. and he's the rookie. He's been quiet, you know, on the major stat line fantasy wise, but he's been very well. Um, we'll see what happens there. Mm-hmm. Russ, I think you knew I was going to lean towards purchase, but I'm glad you got Um The Chiefs side, I, dude, I'll be honest with you, they're going to play around stream on that defense. I don't trust a single one of them. Okay, let's just get that off our chest right now. <laughs> All right. I'll be honest with you. I think it depends of which which game that's going to be. Is the Patriots Chiefs in the playoffs or Patriots Chiefs in, during the season? Because one scored 40 to some points. The other one went to overtime in a close game. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's going to be a fun one. I think it's still Pat Mahomes and still Tom Brady. I'm actually hoping for a shootout just because that would be fun to me. Be nice and to I see think you might like get it. Mm-hmm. I think James White is a must-start if you're an offensive player, by the way. Yeah, probably. I mean, a must-start because the Chiefs aren't going to be able to stop that run. You know, I got another thing. Did you know Chark Kendrick West got picked up again by the Kansas City Chiefs? <laughs> he knows their system well. Back on the team. Mm-hmm. He was just waiting. He was just waiting. He was, he was just waiting. He's like, oh, yeah, they'll, they'll get me again. They need running backs. You know, we are talking about a, a game here that I'm really excited about defensively. Titans, Raiders. Uh, yeah. There's so many players I'm streaming. Okay, Max Crosby, Eric Harris, Logan Ryan, Kevin Beard. Uh, Jam Brown looks like got injured again, so Rashawn Evans. Uh, these are a lot of players – Right, I'm talking to five guys. I'm, I'm, I'm legit starting. If I, if I have all five, any of these five players, I'm starting them. I'll be honest with you, mm-hmm. because I expect Eric Harris to, as good as Ryan Tannehill is, protecting the ball. Eric Harris could get to him. He, he has a nose for it. At a minimum, he's going to get four or five tackles. So, Max Crosby has been a must start lately. Yeah. Definitely like um, the linebackers have been pretty solid in that game. Mm-hmm. Could be a fun one. You know, the, again, these two games right here, Titans, Raiders, good defensive game, Cardinals, Steelers. 
I don't know what you're going to get out of this one. Okay. To be honest with you, I really like the matchup offensively for Pittsburgh because for some reason, as good as the Cardinals, Buda Baker, Jordan Hicks, Mm -hmm. you know, Jones have been, he's been the player, you know, they've put up, they've gotten a lot of points scored against them, but they're also been in every game that they've played. If it was at Pittsburgh, I would give it to Pittsburgh. But it's at the Cardinals, and I think they have a good chance of winning that game. And people say, oh, you know, you look at the Cardinals. Yeah, but if you look at the Cardinals' record, it's Mm -hmm. not been good. No. But if if you've actually watched them play, they should have beat San Francisco twice. Right? Mm -hmm. The last game was honestly probably their worst game of the year, and they got torched by the Rams. I mean, absolutely torched. Which the thing is, you got Buda Baker Garden, Cooper Cup, and they're like, well, let's just give it to Woods for 13 catches. So <laughs> let's say, um, and the Steelers have somehow managed to put together a winning record ooh, this season, but I mean, they're on their third string quarterback. They are, but is he really their third string? He's probably their Not second exactly. string. Yeah, he probably is. You want to trust in Mason Rudolph. But the thing is, is, it's not like they're weak in the receiver aspect. You know, Juju's been hurt, so I'll give you that. But James Washington was a Blitnikoff Award winner in college. Oh, yeah, he's tearing it up, isn't he? He's the real deal. Um, but they're on their uh, – they're. I mean, they're on their third string running back. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if Connor's going to be back this week. But Benny yeah. Snell's obviously a good start. I mean, he's been a solid player. So we'll put together something. I don't know. Cards. This is this is a tough matchup because you got the Cardinals who are obviously still rebuilding. This, this, I and mean, the Steelers. The Steelers are. Win. Yeah, they put together something. I don't know what the heck they're doing there, but they're winning with some backups and third stringers. Yeah, I, I like it overall. Pretty solid group. Um, They've definitely got some depth. They do. I mean, they're pretty stout. That's going to be a fun game to watch. And if it wasn't the fact that I'm trying to finish packing to go um, back home to see family in a week or two, I'd probably go to that game because it's only a five-hour drive for me. So it'd be a fun one to watch. Mm-hmm. All right, last two games of the week, Seahawks-Rams. If you told me two weeks ago, the Seahawks were towards the Rams. Now – the Rams looked phenomenal last week. They looked like the team I expected them to be all year long. And I think we all expected the Rams to be all year long. And the Seahawks have been world beaters. Seahawks are the number two seed right now. Mm-hmm. And I still don't trust the fact that they could win against the Rams <laughs> because they've been a little inconsistent. And I, I love their linebacking court. K.J. Wright, Bobby Wagner, Beast. Um, overall, they've got a pretty good, you know, back, back six. When you're talking about their corners are pretty solid overall. Jadavion Clowney is, seems like he's really figured it out at this point. He's played pretty well. On the other side, you got mm-hmm. to love or hate it. You still got to stop Aaron Donald. Yeah. You still got to worry about uh, the other – Defensive end, I can't think of his name right now. Kid from Florida. Uh, This is this could be an interesting game, right? Because both offenses can score, both defenses can be solid. Corey Littleton is a must start every week. Taylor Rapp has been a pretty good start, and I would tell you it's a good start against the Seahawks because they like to stretch the ball. Uh, I don't know which running back you're going to get out of the Seahawks, either Rashad Penny or Chris Carson. They're going to roll through both of them. The Rams seem like they play better when they give Todd Crowley the ball. Yeah. And I think that they realize that we're there in a playoff push. And the thing is, is I would tell you that I think the Rams have to win out to even sniff the playoffs. And I don't think they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that Rams team is the third best team in the division. Because, but if you, I, I promise you this. 
beginning of the year, if I'd have told you the Rams were the third best team in the division, you'd have told me I was joking. You're, you're crazy. Mm-hmm. I've been like, what the hell are you talking about? But they're third best team in the division and by a long mile right now because San Francisco is playing great. The Seahawks are playing great. Oh, yeah. The whole division is looking good. Yeah, uh, and the Cardinals mm-hmm. could beat a lot of teams too. So, it's, overall, it's probably the toughest division in, in football right now. Right now, yeah, I would say. And it, uh, honestly, it has been that way for a couple of years. If really, you really want to think about it, they've been really tough. Well, it's either them or I wouldn't say the Raiders, I Chiefs, would say Broncos. Have say fifty percent of it's been pretty tough, but the Rams and the Seahawks have been pretty good the last couple of years. But I don't know about the Cardinals and San yeah, Francisco. I mean, San Francisco and Seattle have had some world beater games over the last 10 years. I mean, that's been a crazy rivalry. So it's even better that they've been having to play rivalry games lately, yeah. especially this year, because right now it looks like the Seahawks are going to win the division. And they probably have the easiest matchups of the two. All right. How about that last game? All right. Last game we got. Giants, Eagles. Mm, and you um, got Eli the reemergence Manning. of Eli Manning. Yep. <laughs> the most overrated quarterback being paid this year in Carson Wentz. I truly what? Think that. No way. Bro, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know that I have not been. Mm. Well, let's talk about players that we have paid and have performed. Jared Goff. Say what? I said Jared Goff. Jared Goff. <laughs> Nick Foles. Mm-hmm. Blake Bortles. Carson, Carson Wentz. Wentz. I mean, why did we pay Carson Wentz? He hasn't won a playoff game. Because he did well in the regular season. I don't know. I'm just. He, he has program. a really good coach, and he's an average quarterback. I, I, well, I'll give, he might be a little bit above average right now, but I wouldn't have paid him the way I'm paying him. I'm just I'm I'm weary I'm really eerie in that game. The Eagles defense played really good for like three or four weeks, mm-hmm. and they got throttled last week. The Giants do with Peppers out. I don't trust them at all. I like Antoine Bethea, and maybe one of their linebackers. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. I just don't know. You know, I love their line. You know, their lead linebacker. Three so years with the so Rams. Is he holding? Is the is he holding the gun to your back back there? Yeah, <laughs> maybe uh, one of maybe one of their linebackers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I still maybe trust like me. <laughs> the thing is, is this is a big game for the Eagles. The Eagles yeah. need to win this game. Yeah. Because by losing last week, mm-hmm. they might have given up the division against. I mean, I'll be honest with you, this might be the worst division of football right now. Might be? No, I don't think there's a might there. I mean, I think it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on, man. Tell me this. A six, what, a six and six Dallas team is in the lead? Yeah, but I mean, if it. Tell me this. Can the Eagles and Dallas beat the Bucks? Panthers and Falcons. Maybe the Falcons. I think that I mean we're talking about two teams who I expect to be league leaders. Mm-hmm. And I'm not I don't, don't think, even I don't can't think tell you who's gonna win the division. Yeah, I don't think they that's can. ridiculous. So like you said, a six and six Dallas Cowboys, they, they can make the play. I'm telling you this. They make the playoffs. You think they keep Garrett? Mm-mm. Say they go to the playoffs winning, going. They, they, he, they would have to go to the championship nine game. They would have to go, yeah, they'd have to go 9-7 and seven and either make the championship game or the, the Super Bowl at the very minimum. I don't think it, I, if, they, if they make the playoffs on a 9-7 team, I mean, they might even do it as an 8-18. Mm-hmm. I think they still lose in the first round, so it doesn't matter. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the only way Garrett would keep his job at this point is if they made the NFC Championship game. Maybe at the very run. least. And that's, I mean, that's like you get one more season. It'd be a heck of a run. Uh -huh. All right. Maybe, okay. Be just like the the Giants run. I mean, almost. They'd have to go on to win the Super Bowl. But. Yeah, but the Giants were competitive all year that year, so they were. All right, guy. I mean, it's been an hour, and you know, I appreciate you know. I know it's crazy how you have to get through all these games in an hour, but you know, but guys, we just talk about certain players we like in each game. Like we said, I like Burgess over Tranquil overall. Just tell you now, Russell. <laughs> you said you were going to answer a Sunday. <laughs> I mean, it's, and I'm uh, with he. It's because he posted something. Mm -hmm. um, don't. No, I was going to say Burgess. Yes, I don't either. So, no. all right, guys. So that is it for us. We will be on next week again. We're a proud part of the Full Time Fantasy Podcast Network. Happy to be there. Happy to be a part of this. And I promise you guys, we'll have all. You know, three of us popping again. Jordan has a lot of stuff going on with work. So we got other jobs too, right? So mm -hmm. we appreciate it. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, let's go, let's go, let's go.